beyond fairy tale. It's inconceivable. The final table of the main event has arrived. More than 6,000 battled yes! for a seat. Yes! Yes! The struggle was difficult for all oh, no. and heartbreaking for others. Everyone in this Rio poker room is in shock. Now just nine remain. Yeah. Now the fight for fame and fortune begins. Will one of the bracelet winners add the most coveted piece of jewelry to their collection? Yes. Will one of the international players take the title overseas? Come on. Or will one of the Americans keep the championship home? I play this game to win! The wait is over. The moment is here. One man will walk away with over $8 million and the title of world champion. Yes! The time has come. The final table of the main event begins now. Welcome to the Rio and the final stage of the main event at the World Series of Poker presented by Milwaukee's Best Life. There is a festive atmosphere at the championship table that resembles soccer's World Cup as many countries are represented and energized fans cheer in support of their respective contender. For the first prize of eight and a quarter million dollars, all the players are excited. And of course, some more than others. Let's meet our final nine and see where they stand in descending order of their chip stacks. There is Philip Helm, who has the chip lead at the table and the best stare in poker. Tuan Lam lives in Canada. He said if he wins, he'll bring the money back to help the poor in his home country of Vietnam. John Calmar is from Lancashire, England. He used to be the lead singer of a punk rock band. And at 62 years old, Raymond Rami is the oldest player at this table. He is from Johannesburg, South Africa. Lee Childs from Reston, Virginia, recently left his job there to pursue his poker playing full-time. So far, so good. Lee Watkinson, one of two bracelet winners at the final table, perhaps the most accomplished player here. There is the animated Havad Khan at age 22, trying to become the youngest player ever to win the main event. Jerry Yang from California by way of Laos is a psychologist and social worker and father of six. And the low stack is Alex Kravchenko, who this year became the first Russian citizen to win a World Series bracelet. What a feeling for these final nine through the throngs of players, the bad beats, and now here at the main event final table, congratulations to all. Cocktail, I need Red Bull. <laughs> There's a surprise. Not joking. <laughs> Havad Khan, the video game buff turned online poker player. He says the main event has felt like one long video game. And on the Milwaukee's Best Light Pocket Cam, Havad with 6-5 of hearts. I'm surprised they don't have a line in Vegas on how many Red Bulls he's going to go through at this final table. Yeah, you can't put that up on the board. No one would take the under. <laughs> 600000 is the raise from Havad. There was quite a buzz in this room, Lon, and, and now when they get down to playing, it gets quite serious. I call. King, Queen of Diamonds for Jerry Yang. He makes the call. Action over to Lee Watkinson. He folds, and there is that stare yeah, of Philip Hill. I could have sworn I saw him in Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> he folds. John Kalmar, king, deuce of clubs from the big blind. And he will make the call, so suited cards are in vogue. Three players go into this flop. And the flop is deuce, jack, seven, all diamonds, and Yang with a king high flush. Yahtzee for Yang, Lon. I guess Jerry Yang called ahead for a diamond flush. <laughs> Maybe Kalmar just called ahead for a pair of deuces. Kalmar checks his deuces. Khan, next in line to act, already drawing dead. Yeah, I don't think we will see the trademark Havad Khan eruption on this hand. <laughs> Not this time. He checks it. And Jerry Yang will check as well. He'll be patient and hope the turn hits someone. Turn card is an ace of spades, and Yang gets the check mark. He can only lose the hand by folding. Kalmar says, I check it. Khan quietly checks. Neither Kalmar or Khan get cute there. Now Jerry Yang with it. King high diamond flush makes it one million to stay in the hand. He decides to wait no longer, and I don't know if he can have any takers here. 
Kalmar Fultz, as does Havad, and what a great way to start the final table, flopping a flush. You must have been raising some, with some trash there to throw that away. So Havad pretending like he can't even hear him. So a feeling out round to get us started, plenty of fireworks ahead. Norman Baseball has its World Series, but it's a pretty small world as only the United States and Canada field Major League teams. But this year at the World Series of Poker, we have seen a huge international influence from the very first day. And now as this 2007 championship table gets underway, the trend continues. Our nine finalists come from seven different countries. It's the United Nations of Poker Lawn. Our final table has players born in Denmark, England, Russia, South Africa, Laos, Vietnam, and the United States. And Denmark is the slight favorite with 31-year-old Philip Hilm. He has the chips, he has the game, and he has the stare. And there is that infamous steely stare of Philip Hilm. Hilm is aggressive, Lon, the chip leader, and boy, he just thinks he's going to win. That's 35-year-old Lee Childs with pocket queens. Raised to 720. He says raise it up to 720,000. The blinds are at 120,000, 240,000, 30,000 from each player for the ante. Pocket jacks for Jerry Yang. 2.5 million. And he's going to push it up to 2.5 million. A two big pocket pair going bump in the night early. Lee Watkinson with the six tray. And they go into the muck. Everyone's dressed in black here. Who died? <laughs> yeah, Tuan Lamb in that green shirt really stands out. And so everyone folds and the cool. re-raise back to Childs and he makes the call. Somebody's usually all in pre-flop with these type of hands. Not this time. The Queens of Childs leading the Jacks of Yang. And the flop, 7-4, deuced. Queen's still good for Lee Childs. Three million. And he bets three million with those three baby cards out there. Yeah, he's got to like it. I'm all in. And he's Yang in. comes over the top. Wow. My goodness, Lon. Lee Childs wasn't even done shoving his three million in yet. And Jerry Yang goes all in. What a tough spot so early for Lee. That's his dad, Bill Childs. Let's make the right decision. I don't know if I can lay it down. You'll know. Just play like you've been playing, man. Father and son stretching the one player per hand rule. The other day we saw Childs lay down pocket kings post-flop to Yang, who raised with an inferior hand. The stakes are even higher here. Yeah, this would be for almost all of Lee Childs' chips. It's a big hand, huh, Jerry? And a big decision for Lee. Obviously, he doesn't want to be crippled so early at this final table. That's Jerry Yang's parents and wife there on the right. If Childs makes this call, Yang is all but out of here. I'm sorry, fellas. No problem. It's a big call. Huge decision for Lee Childs. I'm going to show you some respect, Jerry. I think I, I think you're, uh, gosh, I don't know. I, I'm going I'm to fold this. And he folds the queens. All right, I don't like the lay down. I don't like him showing the cards. If you didn't have a beat, don't, I, I, I will. Lee wants to see those cards. I think I made a bad lay down, but I don't know. Bad lay down. Wow. It was a bad lay down. I think so. It was a bad lay down. And this one might haunt Lee for a long time. I don't know where I'm at. I don't know where I'm at. I just things could be me. Good lay down. So Jerry Yang has come out of the blocks with vigor and has set the early tone at this 2007 main event final table. The 2007 World Series of Poker is presented by Milwaukee's Best Light, your best bet for great taste. Miller Brewing Company, and in part by Degree Men. More power than you need, one day you'll need it. And Harris Entertainment, pre-register for next year's World Series of Poker now at worldseriesofpoker.com. Inside the vault here at the Rio, the eight and a quarter million dollar first prize being ready for its appearance. Some people say they covered the bracelet more than the money. I gotta go with the money. <laughs> and there is the bracelet that the champion of the main event will receive. Let's take a look at the E-Trade financial chip count. Philip Helm still the leader, but a tightly bunched group on the upper half, including Jerry Yang now at 18 million. The stock of Lee Childs has sunk a bit, and Alex Kravchenko is still the short stack. And a good look at Jerry Yang, who's only been playing poker two years, Norman. And this is the only tournament of this World Series that he played, the main event. Raise. Pocket ace. 2.5 million. He's going to make it two and a half million. Two and a half million. The blinds are at 120 and 240,000. Watkinson with pocket fives, but they go into the muck. Lamb folds. Big race, Jerry. Now on Philip Hill, king-queen offsuit. 
I call. Helm came to play. The big stack won't shy away. From the big blind, he will make the call. And this is where Helm will stare at his opponent and not at the flop. And here is the flop. It is 8-10. Ace Yang with a set of eights. Well, maybe Jerry did call ahead for these cards. He's flopped a flush, now a set, plus he had pocket jacks. Helm checks his straight draw. Three million. Wow, a cool three million the way Jerry does it. He's deliberate, but he makes the big bet. If Helm doesn't think Jerry has an ace or a pocket pair, I guess he could call here. I would have bucked already. Call. And the chip leader does make the call. Wow. And his mates, including Lars Bonding under the Danish flag, don't like it. Boy, they're both in knee deep now. Maybe Helm is calling here to bluff the turn, and he's picked the wrong hand for that plan. And now the turn card, a three of diamonds, no help to Philip Helm. And action on Helm. And he checks it again. No bluff from Helm. Jerry Yang with the set of eights. All in. Has moved all in again. Yang pushes all in against the chip leader who does not have a hand. Good hand, Jerry. And prudently, oh, Philip Hill yes. gives it up. Wow, and now Jerry Yang, maybe the least skilled player at this final table, he shot up the charts. He's the chip leader now. Yeah, with over 24 million. You're way behind, Philip. Huh. I believe you, Jerry. And now everyone is behind Jerry. He started the day as the second short stack and has risen to become the chip leader. But this is one man who has overcome long odds before. I escaped from Laos as a refugee at the age of seven, ended up in Thailand in a refugee camp. You know, I've been through a lot of uh, emotional torture in the camp, malnutrition, unclean water, unclean food. I have a brother that passed away. My cousins, they died right in front of my eyes. Because of the love of God, I was able to come to this country as a refugee. The day that I heard that I was going to come to America, that day was the happiest moment of my life. My goal in the future is to dedicate more time to charities, perhaps doing some more missionary work. I think that's the very least thing that I, I can do to give back to the community, to the people in other countries, and they just want something to make their lives a little bit brighter. And I'm glad that I can be a part of that. What a journey it has been for Jerry Yang and his family. They are all extremely spiritual, and Jerry plans to donate 10% of his earnings to a variety of charities. Jerry did missionary work for a time in Thailand and in Laos. So 10% of Jerry's <laughs> earnings will mean quite a lot to some charity. On the Milwaukee's Best Light Tournament Update, you see ninth place is worth over $525,000. First place, eight and a quarter million, and five players will win at least a million dollars. Tell you what, Jerry, I'm just going to sit here and let you get everybody else's chips, and then we'll battle it out heads up. How's that sound? I told you since day one, best player I've ever played with in my life. Thank you. Well, Philip Helm just took it on the chin from Jerry, and I don't know why his chin was even out there. <laughs> Helm no longer the chip leader. That goes to Jerry Yang right now, and with Ace King. One million. You know, it wasn't too long ago he was giggling at saying one million when he bet, and he seems to have the hang of it now, Norman. Well, you know you're on a roll when you haven't finished stacking your chips up from another hand and you're able to raise the next hand, <laughs> and he's immediately starting to play big stack poker with that big raise. Eight five of diamonds for Helm in the small blind. If I were Helm, I might lick my wounds a little longer and wait for a better spot. Call. Philip is not waiting. He makes the call. He's come to play, and he's come to play with Jerry Yang again. Big blind John Kalmar folds, and so once again, Helm and Yang go to the flop. Yang with the advantage with ace king. The flop is Jack King. Five, Yang pairs his king. Helm also got a pair of fives and a flush draw. Jerry Yang keeps getting hands, and he keeps hitting flops. And Philip Helm got a piece of that flop, and he checks. Two million. And Jerry's going to crank it a little harder. Two million. The new chip leader keeps the pressure on the old chip leader. I know Helm likes his swashbuckling image, but there's a time to swash, and there's a time to buckle. Right now, he's just kind of treading water. Uh, he does make the call of the two million very calmly. Staring back at Jerry Yang with a turn card to come. 
And it is a deuce of hearts, no help to Philip Hilm. He checks it again. Yang always very deliberate. Four million. Wow. Jerry is a betting machine. How deep does Philip Hilm want to get in? I'm all in. All the way! Wow. Well, he is just swashbuckled with his flush draw and a baby pair. And if Yang calls here, Hill might wash ashore. Hill must not believe Jerry has the goods. I call. Yang makes the call to put Hill at risk. This seems improbable. Hill was chip leader like 15 seconds ago. And this would be for most of Jerry's chips also if he gets unlucky here. Philip Helm had everything going for him. Oh, I forgot we have the uh, bearded lady concession here at the Rio. <laughs> Khan trying to break some of the tension, but it cannot detract from Philip Helm's predicament. Helm now needs an eight, a five, or a diamond, or his day is over. And now the river card. It's a six yes! of clubs! Yes! 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 Yang has eliminated Philip Helm! <laughs> Uh, that is a monster meltdown for Philip Helm from penthouse to outhouse in two hands. Ninth place, $526,000 for Philip Helm. And Lars Bonding is crushed. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God. Philip Helm went from final table favorite to first man out. And Jerry Yang now the dominant chip leader with over 44 million. The World Series of Poker presented by Milwaukee's Best Light. Main event. Welcome back on the KFC Snacker Cam. You see the large crowd gathered in the Rio Poker Room, and they have just witnessed a stunning sequence of events culminating in the elimination of Philip Helm by Jerry Yang, who now owns one-third of the total chips in play. Jerry who? Championship table always brings out royalty. There's Chris Ferguson. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah, Jesus. What's going on, man? <laughs> Jesus is thinking, boy, I sit in the back row and the madman still finds me. <laughs> All right, so eight players now left at this final table. Lee Childs will fold over to chip leader Jerry Yang. Five tray. Oh, there must be a mistake. Those can't be his cards. And everybody breathes a sigh of relief as he folds. Lee Watkins and Queen Deuce goes into the muck. Looking sharp in pinstripes today is Lee. Avad Khan. Jack Trey. He's reaching. Jack Trey. 700,000 from Havad. I guess he's bored. He's used to playing 20 screens at once online. Raymond Rami got us down to nine when he knocked off Stephen Garfinkel. He folds. Krepchenko in the big blind. Boy, we need a better shuffle. These are a lot of rag hands these guys are looking at. Jack Seven goes into the muck, and Khan picks up the blinds and Eddie's. First in, gets the win. That's right, baby. <laughs> Let's get going. Oh! I'd like to excuse this as misplaced youthful exuberance. Boy, can't wait to see what happens when the 22-year-old actually wins a big pot. No one has been as vocal or has enjoyed himself more here than Havad Khan. Ah! Yeah, I just like to get everybody in a good mood. Hey! So if I'm at a table and I just think of something random, I'll say it. I'm going to buy a bunch of beat-up Hondas and drive them into a wall. If the random thought is a squiggly line in that direction, I'm going to go like that. Ah! Ooh, oh, 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 Nobody oh, thinks it's funny, huh? I see so many people just so uptight and they're so pompous. Like, why not just enjoy the moment and be cool with everybody? Uh, isn't that what everybody wants? Oh! Man, seriously, just act normal, okay? To me, this is a game. It's not about being competitive. I do it because I have so much fun doing it. Yes, yes, yes! Yeah! Well, it might be fun to run down the middle of the street buck naked, but you don't do it because it might bother other people. And you don't slurp and burp because it might bother other people. All right, action on John Kalmar. He tees it up and kicks it in. Avad Khan with Jack Four. No thanks. <laughs> 
<laughs> Raven Arami has yet to play. And it folds around to the small blind. Jerry Yang, ace nine, off suit. Ace nine from the small blind is pretty playable. Nobody in the hand. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> they know what's coming. <laughs> cool. <laughs> and no expression, not no expression whatsoever. <laughs> they're all glad they're not in the hand. One million. Another million from Yang. He likes that number. Yang keeps raising more than the standard three times the big blind, and it puts pressure on all the smaller stacks. A seven for Watkinson in the big blind. All in. And all he's in. gonna try to make a move. Lee pushes with his ace. I don't like that. Wow, in the long haul, he had to figure he liked his chances against this group. That's his fiance, Timmy DeRosa. And there's his buddy and bracelet winner, Ted Lawson, on the right. Halls is going to double Lee up. No weapon formed against him shall prosper. I'm surprised Lee made this play. The most accomplished player left here with enough chips to wait for a better spot. All right, I call. And Yang will make the call with a chance to knock off another pro. Jerry's wife, Sue. Oh, my Lord. You know your purpose for me. I just don't know why Lee would want to put his tournament on the line this early without a clear advantage. And now the flop is deuce 6-4. Six, yes. No help to Watkinson. Yes. And Watkinson is close to going out of this main event. A lot of people picked him to win it. Turn card is a king of diamonds, and now Watkinson, one oh Lord, card Lord. from elimination. Have a purpose for me today. Come on, make him a believer. Make Lee a believer, Father. I'm not sure who the Lord is listening to, but Watkinson needs a seven or he's done. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, come on, let me win this one. River card now Father. is a jack. Yes! 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 Jerry does it again. I can't believe Helm is gone. I can't believe Watkinson is gone. Yes! Hey, Watkinson, eighth place, wins almost $586,000. Hey, play hey, good man. And Jerry Yang is dialed into the right people. Hallelujah. 55 million chips, and they keep riding the Hallelujah Trail. First prize money over $8 million being readied for transport to the Rio Poker Room. I was in there earlier, Alon, and took two stacks while nobody was looking. <laughs> they better hurry up for that money, the way Jerry's going. Everyone here wondering who can take Jerry down a notch. I'm sure these two main event winners feel they could do it. His table's going with real fast. He won it last year, so he's, he's a little bit fresh Jerry from the experience. He won but, the 11th this year. <laughs> Unbelievable. But we both want to be out there. That's where we want to be. That's, that's what I poker's all it. about. It's making this final table. Helmuth and Gold lamenting about missing out on the championship table. Both were knocked out of the main event on day one. But maybe they can't collect another glamorous prize. We'll find out in this special edition of The Nuts, hosted by my partner, Norman Chad. The end of the main event. A chance for poker's most prestigious prize. A chance for a flushing. The sounds of the Rio Poker Room. Yes, yes! are like a symphony to my ears. One time. There is some noise I enjoy more than others. Who's the king? No, not him. <laughs> my favorite expression is an oldie, but still very goody. Lay down, baby. It's all mine, baby. Yeah, baby. Scotty Witt's catchphrase. Baby, baby, baby. Was a staple at this year's main event. Good luck, baby. It makes him worthy. This is the tip, all right, baby? Of his first flushy, baby. <laughs> Lots of people like to bring stuff with them to the main event. And other people don't bring much stuff at all. Doesn't your seat belt? But some people's signature items are worthy of special attention. No, not him! One item I actually delighted in was Dario Minieri's neckwear. Hey, anyone who can pull off a four-foot scarf in the middle of the desert deserves props for their props. Is poker a sport? Who knows? But I do know we saw some enhanced physical performances this year. A new dance move was invented. An unfortunate brawl erupted. What's going on, buddy? And, okay, enough already with him. Where was I? Oh yeah, usually this last plushie is saved for the one and only Phil Helmuth. And his sublime high performance driving deserves consideration. So when it comes to the best physical performance, there could be only one. Billy Gazes wins for his unbelievable field goal <laughs> attempt oh. that came back to haunt him. 
Oh yeah, and special thanks to our Golden Arm intern who made it possible for Billy Gazes to limp away with a flushie. Wow, Helmuth got shut out of the flushies this year. I can't believe it. He's whining about it as we speak. Seven players left. Alex Kravchenko won his bracelet in the $1,500 Omaha High Low event. It seems like Kravchenko's been out to sea, clinging to driftwood for days on end at this event. He's been short stacked forever here. Seven deuce into the muck. Lee Childs now. King Jack, poor Lee, having Jerry Yang to his left this entire time. And Lee still hasn't recovered from laying down those pocket queens against Braves. Yang. He's going to raise it. He's going to make it 720000 Lee never considered himself superstitious, but he and his dad been eating the same breakfast, snack, and dinner every day at the buffet. So Childs from the small blind with the raise over to Jerry Yang in the big blind. Jerry with jack eight of spades. I would hate to be behind Jerry Yang in an ATM line. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh oh. Okay. Yeah, and if it seems like he's playing every hand, it's because he is. And he's got Lee squirming. All in. And he moves all in. Does it again? A massive raise, and this time Lee Child's got to ask himself, "Do I want to risk all my chips?" He laid it down last time. Well, my hand's not that great, but he can't possibly have all these hands. Just make the right decision. You know what it is. Oh, are you really catching that many cards? We actually saw Greg Raymer and Jamie Gold do this with the big stack. You just keep blasting away, and sometimes you might even win pots without the best hand. I'm going to call. And Lee Childs will call. Here we go again. First hill, then Watkinson. Now Childs at risk, but the difference is Yang is the underdog. Yeah, Childs made the right read. Now he's looking for the right result. So Lee Childs. Has Jerry dominated with a shot at doubling up? Oh, King! Hey! Oh, King! King! Father and son have been sewn King. together at the hip during this main event. All right, so here's the flop. Couple of fours and a six. Nothing in there to worry, Childs. Let's go club, club again. Let's go club, club again. Childs strengthens his hold on this hand. And Yang is looking at about losing six million of his chips here. Turn card. Oh, an eight for Jerry. Yes! Yes! More club. But Child did pick up a flush draw. Father, I will glorify your name. Father. Is this really happening, Norman? Well, Lee with that flush draw now. So Childs needs a king or a club to stay alive. Let people see your miracles. I believe in your and name. And now the river card. I believe in your name. Yang does it again. Yeah! It's a Jerry Yang tidal wave. You just got to seek shelter. Seventh place for Childs, and that's the way to go out. A big smile and a hug. Well done, Lee. Jerry Yang, though, is out of control. 62 million. The Nets, brought to you by Planters, celebrating 100 years of fresh taste. The World Series of Poker, presented by Milwaukee's Best Light. Main event. Welcome back to the Rio, where the Jerry Yang Show continues. He has eliminated the first three players from this championship table, and we are now six-handed. I just want to see one of those chips. Phil Helmuth checking out the new beige chip worth 250000 Phil's exercise routine includes daily camera time. <laughs> Don't let him touch him, Jerry. He'll never get it back. Nice. <laughs> I just had to see one. The purple chip there worth 100000 And on the E-Trade financial chip count, you see Jerry Yang has the most of just about any color, over $62 million. Krevchenko still the short stack. Tuan Lam, the only player here not dressed in black lawn. He's wore this lucky green shirt every day of the main event. On Milwaukee's best light pocket cam, 10 deuce. And Tuan folds another hand. John Kalmar now with Ace King off suit. He says his mantra at this uh, main event has been play steady, don't be reckless. Ten purples, and that's a one million chip raise. And there is John's wife, Kyla, just came out to watch the championship table. And action now back around to chip leader Jerry Yang. The one million chip raise in front of him. Nine eight off suit. 
And we now interrupt the 2007 main event for this Jerry Yang meditation. <laughs> Jerry got in the main event by winning the last satellite seat available at his local casino. It cost him $225. And he does make the call from the big blind with the unsuited connectors. Kalmar said he didn't want to bust out before his wife got here, so he played very conservatively from 36 players down to nine. Jerry with a page out of the Philip Hilm stare manual. And now the flop gives both straight draws. Kalmar's his best. Yeah, they both need a jack, but Yang would be on the butt end of the straight. Go on, check. And they both check it to the turn. Now the turn card is at 10, pairs the board. Kalmar, step closer to nicking Yang for a few chips. Jerry checks again. Oh. Still out of the check. Kalmar content to keep his costs down. River card is a five. Kalmar with the ace high earns the check mark. 1.5 million. Jerry's going to bluff at it. Yeah, he doesn't push real hard, but he is going to try to bluff Kalmar off the smallish pot. Oh, cool. Kalmar cannot be pushed. Good call, sir. Very good call. Kalmar wants to see Jerry's cards. No, can I say? I don't, I don't like that. Is he trying to rub Jerry's nose in it? Yeah. And Kalmar shows his ace high was good enough. Boom! <laughs> so there's a change of pace at this table. First one, we're on a roll. He is human, he's stoppable. <laughs> Kalmar with some kryptonite in his hip pocket. Well, the fun-loving Brit will never be confused with Marcel Lusk when it comes to fashion, but he does have some very cool t-shirts. I've got a, a few different t-shirts that I've had on every day. Clash ones, Sex Pistols ones, um, but quite a few Family Guy t-shirts. Yeah, I'll have to wash those for the final. I also brought a Britney Spears t-shirt with me for uh, a bit of a giggle. I assure people I am not really a Britney Spears fan. I used to be in a, a punk band. I was the, uh, the micist. Some people call it singing. <laughs> yeah, we used to do loads of uh, pubs and clubs and stuff around the north of England. Uh, we were called Nameless. We, we couldn't actually think of a name, so we just stuck with Nameless. I wanted to call ourselves Get Off. So at the end of the night when everyone was going, Get Off, Get Off, we could go, go on, they will just do one more. <laughs> Calmar with a Family Guy t-shirt today. Happy to be here. He actually was running so bad he was going to go home before the main event, but to change his airline ticket was going to cost too much, so he stayed and won his seat in a last-minute satellite. And he has impressed everyone that he's played with. Havad Khan says Kalmar is one phenomenal player. Pocket sixes for Havad Khan. Khan dropped out of SUNY Albany. He's hoping to supplant Phil Helmuth as the youngest main event winner ever. Khan is 22. Helmuth was 24. He raises it to 800000 Now on to Raymond Rami. Lots of folks waiting around for others to get knocked out, Lon. He will pass. Move the action over to Alex Kravchenko, King Trey. He's had no cards, and he's got no chips. The man with most of the chips, Jerry Yang now. Oh, rags. That's a mistake. I'll talk to the dealer. <laughs> Tuan Lam says, no, nope, not this time. And now Kalmar in the big blind with Ace King. Kalmar's starting to get some Jerry Yang cards. Correct. Yeah, the Ace King did work against Yang. He says, raise it up. All right, John's gonna it. And there is the call of 800,000. Let's have another two. Ah, two million more. That's a statement raise, because Havad popped it from early position, and he doesn't mess around too often. Kalmar telling him, I'm holding something big. I have a hand this time. Okay, Doug. I think you do, too. I do indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't mean he's a good hand. Navad Khan will give it up. <laughs> Kalmar bullies Khan. I guess it's my turn now, is it? It did. It just might be his turn. A little bit here, a little bit there, and who knows? Maybe John Kalmar can take on Goliath. and a quarter million dollars on its way from the vault to the Rio Poker Room. I don't want to sound any alarms here, but I think they're heading out to the service entrance door. <laughs> Security, Jerry Yang has to be the favorite right now to win it all with a huge chip lead with almost 59 million tournament chips. And John Kalmar is so far the only one to be able to make any inroads against Jerry. We started this tournament with 6,358. We are down to six. And one of them is Tuan Lam in that lucky green shirt who's managed to hang on to second place, though he's been very quiet so far at this table. 
A surprising final table so far. We've lost the chip leader in Philip Hill. We've lost the most accomplished player in Lee Watkinson. And that man, Jerry Yang, holding almost half of the chips in play right now. Ace, six of hearts. And he's quiet. We know what he's going to do. Raise. <laughs> the man's a machine. 1.2 million. 1.2 1. 2 million from Yang, and Lamb goes away. John Kalmar with ace 10. And he wakes up with a better ace from the big blind. Cool. And he makes the call. And you know, even though Yang has a mountain of chips line, if Kalmar right now was to double up through Yang, they'd be virtually even. Gotta love no limit. King, deuce, jack. Kalmar's bigger ace still leads. And he checks it. Two million. Jerry taking a shot at the pot. Cool. And a very confident call from Kalmar. You know, but for an inexperienced player, Jerry is executing an interesting strategy. He opens the pots big, keeps banging away, and lets the smaller stacks decide if they want to risk their tournament. All right, so these two now to the turn. Kalmar way ahead. Seven on the turn changes nothing. Check. Kalmar checks. Five million. <laughs> wow, that might change something. Yeah, it's a lot of pressure. Kalmar read Yang good just a little while ago, but Jerry literally keeps raising the stakes. Trying to read Jerry Yang, and Kalmar folds his better hand. Yeah, this time Kalmar can't withstand the pressure. You know, Jerry Yang is manufacturing some of his own good luck here. And we have heard Scotty Wynn say you need a lot of heart to play No Limit. Jerry had more heart that time. And for one of our final six players, that bracelet will soon be on their wrist. Ah, nice bracelet. Give me the cash. <laughs> Alex Kravchenko at his second final table at the World Series. He won the first one he was at earlier this year. And there you get a peek at that gold bracelet he won. Yeah, we don't get a peek at his cards. All right. We will now get a peek at how he plays, though. And he is moving all his chips into the pot. I don't know what he has, and I don't even know how he's still here. He hasn't had many chips at any time. We've glanced at him over the past few days. Can Jerry Yang tangle with him with queen four? He folds it. Tuan Lam now. And, and it appears that Lam is trying to fold his way up the money ladder. Kalmar folds also. Back to Havad Khan, who says... Krevchenko is one of the tightest players he's ever seen. Pocket threes. Come on. And Khan moves all in. He has Alex covered. Rami still to act in the big blind. He folds, so this is the degree all-in moment. The only bracelet winner remaining at risk. He tells the crowd, I'm in a coin flip against the dancing bear. <laughs> Two over cards against the pocket threes of Havad Khan with Kravchenko at risk. The flop, and there's a jack for Kravchenko to take the lead. The Russians make almost as much noise as Havad Khan can. <laughs> so now Havad Khan looking to come from behind. Turn card is an ace. That's not going to do it. Good news for Kravchenko. Khan needs a three on the river to knock out Kravchenko. River card is a four! Alex Kravchenko earns the degree check mark to double up his modest stack. And that's a big blow to Rain Khan's chip stack. Kravchenko now with a little breathing room up to almost six million while Khan bemoaning his lost chips. The Degree All-In Movement is brought to you by Degree Men. More power than you need. One day you'll need it. The 2007 World Series of Poker is presented by Milwaukee's Best Light. Your best bet for great taste. Miller Brewing Company and in part by E-Trade. It's easy. It's extraordinary. It's E-Trade. And the Rio All Suite Hotel and Casino, home of the 2007 World Series of Poker. Welcome back to the Rio. Five of our remaining players will leave here as millionaires. We do have six players left. They come from six different countries. Vietnam, England, South Africa, Laos, Russia, and USA still in the house. Alex Kravchenko from Russia, the most accomplished player at this table, folds, as does our chip leader, Jerry Yang. 
Action falls around to John Kalmar. From the small blind. Ace nine. And he's going to limp in. The blind's at 150 and 300. Yeah, Kalmar will not advertise that he has an ace. And Havad Khan, king eight. And he'll play for free. These two to the flop. And the flop is ace 10 8. And Kalmar now with a bigger lead with the aces. Kalmar with top pair, Khan with bottom pair. Kalmar checks it. Khan looks suspiciously at the English player, and he checks back. Turn card now is another eight, and what a card for Havad, trip eights. Kalmar first to act. 400. 400,000. Well, that would be a good bet if he weren't a 19 to one underdog at the moment. <laughs> and Havad just calls disguising the strength of his hand. So now Havad with that huge lead. These two go to the river. It is a jack, and that will give Havad Khan the check mark. Kalmar with aces up, but he's beaten. Check. Check it. He checks over to Khan. Havad Khan now pushes in over two million. We've seen Havad do this before. He overbets the pot against Kalmar. Kalmar with an immediate call. And he can kiss those chips goodbye. Havad Khan will turn over the winning hand. And Kalmar indicates, well done, Havad. Just a fist? What is this? Just a fist? Has he turned over a new leaf? <laughs> Everyone expected something that's like paying to see Wayne Newton and getting William Hung. <laughs> And Havad's entourage <laughs> loves that because those chips came just <laughs> in the nick of time. Let's take a look at our E-Trade financial chip count with six players left. And if you're just joining us, there is nothing wrong with your TV. Jerry Yang does indeed have 63 million chips. Havad Khan and Kravchenko, the two short stacks right now. I don't know why Kravchenko even looks. You got nothing, buddy. As 10-4 do go into the muck. Jerry Yang now. Pocket jacks. After a brief intermission, the Jerry Yang Show is back. Race. There you go. Same channel, <laughs> same program. 1.5 million this time. This time he raises five times the big blind. Who wants to mess with him? Deuce tray for Lamb. No thanks, he says. Kalmar folds over to Havad Khan. Ace queen suited. With the prettiest card in the deck. Havad Raise. in the small blind Raise. says, I'm going to re-raise it. <laughs> and Havad needs both fists to make it six million. Hey. And Rami in the big blind. <laughs> There's such a thing as defending your blind and, and, and with pocket fives, though. Well, it's an okay hand, but two big raises in front of them, one of them from the big stack. You know, why stick a toe into these uh, <laughs> rapid waters? Well, seven to me. It's ahead of the way, Josh. He's itching to play. Hey. But Raymond gives it up. Now he hasn't shown a lot of gamble in him today. Prudent move. The race back to Jerry. How much more do you have behind? I got about <clears throat> three and a half to four million, Jerry. Boy, I don't think I can lay this hand down, Con. I have a big hand. Not a lot of people would lay down pocket jacks here, and I don't think Jerry Yang will. All right. I call. Jerry does make the call. And his wife, Sue, looking on nervously. It's a huge pot already. Jerry, I'm all in in the dark. That's an avant-garde move. Wow. All in the dark? OK. So you call. No, 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 not yet, not yet. I, I haven't said anything yet. Jerry's not committing anything. And I guess Havad's decided he's pot committed already, but he has completely eliminated his post-flop options against a guy who can bust him. And the flop, well, no spades. Yang still leads. Yang's getting almost 5-1 to one on his money. He's got a call. I call. He does, and there you go. Havad all in. Jerry Yang has knocked off all three players so far and with a good shot at making it four in a row. Khan's like, what am I going to do? I tried to chip up against this runaway train. Jerry's parents forbade him from playing cards when he was a child. I think they're okay with it now. Turn card is a tray, and Khan does pick up a straight draw. 
But the 22-year-old is on the brink. Khan can survive with an ace, a queen, or a five for a straight. Can Jerry Yang knock off another player? The river card now. He does it again! After a brief intermission, the Jerry Yang show is back big time. Yang's fourth straight knockout at this final table. We didn't see much of Khan's dance at this final table, but he proved in this main event he's more than just bluster. I want you to know you have a friend for life, okay? All right? You played it very well, man. Thank you. I wish the best of you good luck. You all play well and you're not friends of mine. Havad Khan exits as Jerry's latest victim, and amazingly, Yang is over 73 million. Yeah! All eyes in this room on that man, Jerry Yang, wondering if he can indeed maintain the incredible momentum that he was riding right now. Frankly, most of these players, Tuan Lam, Raymond Rami, John Kalmar, seem to be sitting back waiting for others to bust out, and Alex Kravchenko hasn't even had enough chips to play many hands. Over to South African Raymond Rami on the Milwaukee's Best Light Pocket Cam. Five deuce, and he will fold. Krevchenko now. A little coy again with his cards. But they're good enough I'm to move all in, I guess. Well, he does not part with these chips lightly. Trust me, he has a hand. Action on Jerry Yang now. Jack 10, offsuit. Please. As we know, Jerry, meticulous, deliberate. Frankly, he's slow. <laughs> and why would Jerry be thinking about this with Jack-10? Well, he'll call with any two cards, plus he'd love to knock out probably the most dangerous player left. If you fall, I will show you. I don't want you to call me because you are so like you know, all the showdowns. <laughs> I call. Wow, and there's the call. Jerry with Jack-10, but he's dominated by the ace-10 of Kravchenko. Kravchenko wants to double up, of course, but I believe him. He didn't want Yang to call no matter what Jerry had. So Alex Kravchenko putting his tournament life on the line against the chip leader. If Jerry were to lose this, he'll only have about 68, 69 million chips left. Good. Destitute. Let's see the flop. All right, now the flop. Kravchenko at risk. 5-8 Trey, Kravchenko still good. 5-8 Trey Lon is good news for Alex Kravchenko. Not many dents in the armor of Jerry Yang so far. Turn card another eight, no help to Yang. Kravchenko a 93% favorite to double up. If the short man sucks out, it's a crime. If the short man sucks out, he'll do time. <laughs> well, there is the short man. Yang needs a jack and a jack only to knock out Kravchenko. It's a deuce, and Kravchenko does double up to Jerry Yang. He was pretty much an unknown until he won a bracelet this year, but Alex plays a lot of tournaments in Europe and Russia. Give him any chips, and this bracelet winner will be dangerous. All right, on the KFC Snacker Cam, you can see the fans shoulder to shoulder as the final five players decide this world championship. Raymond Rami from South Africa. And that's like bingo to him, Norman, a couple of jacks. And Rami, a jack-of-all-trades entrepreneur, owned a body shop, was in construction, renovated homes, ran a bed and breakfast. And he is putting some chips into play, 2.7 million. You know, ever since Johnny Chan became the first foreign-born world champion in 1987, eight of 20 main event winners have been foreign-born. Jerry Yang, 10-4. And he will not play. Action around to Tuan Lam with a small pocket pair, a couple of fours. Tuan's a, a likable fellow, Lon, but he's trying to fold his way to a world title, I believe. Not on my watch! He does fold. There he goes again. John Kalmar now with Ace King from the big blind. I'm all in. And he moves all in! And we have seen Kalmar play Ace King in critical hands. The cards have been kind to him previously. Now the re-raise back to Raymond Rami. This would be for most of Rami's chips. How much you got there? Uh, um, you got more than me. Oh, I don't know about that. Of course. If I got more than you, I'm going to call you, I think. Okay. So make sure you got less. <laughs> <laughs> well, be a good sport, Lon. Run down there and tell them Rami has more chips. It'll save him time. Raymond's rooting section, including his wife, Teresa, seemed to be more nervous than he is. 
One thing about these two guys, Norman, even with the seriousness of the whole Six. final table, they've managed to keep their good humor. About 10, isn't it? All right, cool. And cool. Rami does make the call. He has Kalmar covered. He will make the call. Kalmar was in such a slump. He, he tried to go home before the main event. Because he stayed, he's going to be at least a million dollars richer. No pictures, baby. Only a jacket. We've got to bring a picture. No pictures. Yeah, a lot, mate. Okay. Whatever happens. Pocket jacks for Raymond Rami against the ace king of John Kalmar at risk. John's wife, Kyla, on the right. She cannot bear to look. You know, you'd think the English would have a champ better than those Russians. Give me the picture. Give me the picture. I want to kiss the picture. Raymond wants Jerry's lucky picture of his family. Oh, they're my kids, though. <laughs> Jerry does not sell his children out to strangers. <laughs> All right, here we go to the flop. Kalmar at risk. Four, baby. The flop is 9-6-10. The Jacks still lead for Raymond Rami. You've got to like Kalmar's smiling countenance. Turn card is a tray. Kalmar down to his last chance. One more slow one. And he's still in good spirits. No biggie, I'm happy. John wanted to buy a Ferrari with first place money. That may have to wait. I'll do nothing to sell you now. Nothing stupid. Kalmar needs an ace or king or he's gone. Hold up, baby. River card is another hey, tray. Rami takes the hand, eliminating John Kalmar in fifth place. And Rami now second in chips. Kalmar wins $1.2 million. No, you too, mate. You all are. Fantastic. Well played. And a big win for Raymond Rami there. And that's a million dollar kiss for John. And we're down to our final four. The 2007 World Series of Poker is presented by Milwaukee's Best Light, your best bet for great taste. Miller Brewing Company, and in part by E-Trade. It's easy, it's extraordinary, it's E-Trade. And Harris Entertainment. Pre-register for next year's World Series of Poker now at WorldSeriesOfPoker.com. The World Series of Poker, presented by Milwaukee's Best Light. Main event. Welcome back inside the Rio Poker Room. We are now down to our last four players, thanks to Raymond Rami. The big 3-0. Who's still giddy after that knockout of John Kalmar. One of two things is going to happen. Are they going to win or are we going to get chucked out? <laughs> I will never chuck you yet. Well, I, I, I can never chuck you yet. Raymond's been playing poker for 40 years, says he's a self-taught player. He's got plenty of supporters here in the stands, but it pales in comparison to what awaits him back home. I'm not a really a limelight person. You know, I'm a very uh, reserved person. You don't know what's happening in South Africa. They are going ballistic. To have a South African in the final now, they're over the moon. Come on, Ray! Come on, Raymond! It's a lot of money. Eight and a quarter million. It's about 60, 60 million in rands in our money. It's a lot of money. Come on, baby! I'm scared to go home because they're already saying they're going to do something at the airport and everything. You can see by what's happening there. everywhere. It's on the internet, it's on the it's all over the show already. It's gonna be electric, I know. Rami, 62 years old, trying to become the second oldest ever to win the main event. Johnny Moss was 66 when he won his third title in 1974. All right, Jerry Yang is first to act, and he's got King Queen. Raise. Jerry originally had his mind set on being a medical doctor, but million. went on a mission, worked with kids, and felt that was his calling. He's going to raise it to 1.5 million, as close to a standard three times the big blind bet as we've seen from him. Well, his MO has been, if I enter a pot, I enter it big and apply pressure. Lamb folded, as does Raymond Rami, now on Kravchenko. Tied in his cards again. I'm tired of that. And he's standing up again and pushing all in again. Well, he's actually tired of that. Uh, because he's short stacked, Kravchenko has just had one move down all in. Action back over to Jerry. So now another big decision for our chip leader, Jerry Yang. Well, Jerry would have to commit twice as many chips for this call as he did for the last Kravchenko all in. I call. And Jerry calls again. And Kravchenko is pinning his tournament hopes on pocket trays. A coin flip for Alex Kravchenko's main event future. Alex hit Jerry for over four million last time. Jerry's supporters have had no time to sit down. 
All right, here we go. Kravchenko all in. His pocket trays against the king queen of Yang. And there's a tray in there. Kravchenko with the check mark. Jerry's drawing dead. You know, I've never been to a rugby match, Lon, but it just feels like one in here. And just like that, the hand is over. Yang is drawing dead. Alex Kravchenko takes the pot. The chip leader is in disbelief, and Kravchenko now around 19 million. And if Kravchenko ever gets a whole lot of chips and can start playing poker, watch out. And a couple of steps backward for Yang. There's hope. Yeah, Yang hits a bump in the road. But with that stack right now, it doesn't hurt too much. But like you said, Alex Kravchenko, a bracelet winner at this year's World Series and a very powerful player. On the E-Trade financial chip count, you see Jerry Yang still with the overwhelming chip lead over 64 million. Tuan Lam, the short stack. This main event is the only tournament Jerry played at this year's World Series. Kravchenko broke through for his first bracelet in the Omaha High-Low event. When Kravchenko first started playing poker, he played five-card stud. Studs is favorite game. He said he read a lot of poker books when he began, but he didn't find them too helpful. He just doubled up with pocket trays, and now he's got pocket deuces, and he limps in. The blinds at 200 and 400,000. Jerry Yang read Super System when he first started playing poker, and he found that helpful. Just a couple of years ago, ace-10 offsuit from the small blind, and he limps in. Big blind, Tuan Lam with king, queen, and he will check. These three will go to the flop. The flop is for Jack-10. Yang got the best of that with a pair of 10s. Lamb with a straight draw. Jerry, will check. Jerry checks. And about 1.5 million. And Lamb comes to life. 1.5 million. Lamb now the short stack. Does decide to get busy. Kravchenko missed the flop, and his deuces go into the muck. I raise. Raise. Now that's the Jerry we've come to love. Well, Lamb just got busy against the man who keeps busting people. And he makes it four and a half million total. Three million for Lamb to call. I'm going to go all in. And Lamb fires back at Jerry. It's the move I hate, Lon. All in on a draw. Now, Yang has uh, doubled up Alex Kravchenko twice. I'm sure he does not want to extend Tuan Lam the same courtesy. <laughs> Lam has been very quiet at this championship table. All right, I call. And Jerry will make the call. It's like saying, welcome to the party, Tuan. Yeah. Now go home. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Well, it could be worse for, for Tuan Lam. He's a virtual coin flip. I still hate committing all your chips when you don't have a hand yet. Juan Lamb at risk against the chip leader and juggernaut Jerry Yang. We don't glorify Kalum Bay, what you do. Four and eight. All right, now the turn card. Four of hearts. That's not what Lamb was looking for. Juan Lamb, one card away from going out in fourth place. Lamb needs an ace, king, queen, or nine, or he is wamboozled. River card is a queen. <laughs> Lamb doubles up. And they're trying to creep up on Jerry Yang. I told you, okay? Okay? Juan Lamb now with 23 million chips. Maybe that will empower him to start playing more pots. <laughs> yes! The Canadian pride is swelling while Jerry Yang's chip stack is shrinking. Eight and a quarter million dollars. More money than the Masters, the Kentucky Derby, and Wimbledon combined. Win the main event, and it's all yours. 8.25 million? Just give me the .25 and I can't complain. <laughs> well, the over 6,300 players began this tournament here in the Rio. Knew there was big money at the end of the rainbow, but these four left have to be somewhat incredulous that it's still within their reach. Action on Alex Krepchenko with ace nine off suit from the small blind. And he'll limp in for 200,000. On day one, Jerry Yang introduced himself to me and, and told me it was an honor to meet me. I thought to myself, what a loser. <laughs> now 6,000 players later, he's the chip leader at the final table, so who's the loser? <laughs> Yang with jack 10 for the big blind checks. The flop 4-8-5 misses both players. Krepchenko still leads, and he will check his ace high. Jerry checks as well. 
Turn card is an ace. That hits Kravchenko. He earns the check mark with a pair of aces. And he bets 600000 Well, Yang's got nothing. And he's drawing dead. I raise. Raise. And he raises. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think it works better for him when he applies pressure early in the hand than late, especially when he doesn't have a hand late. Two million more. All right, so it's 2.6 million total. But Jerry's MO has been consistent. You're going to dance with me. You must be prepared to pay the piper. Krepchenko now with the aces. And he likes to stand up when he moves all in. Boy, Alex Kravchenko has that dance move down, Pat. And Jerry could have saved his time by just mucking his cards as soon as Alex stood up. He can't call. <laughs> so Kravchenko turning the tables on Jerry Yang. All right, I'll lay it down. And he does get out of the way. Good fold, Jared. Good fold. They almost call, actually. Jerry Yang with a bit of a white lie to the man who takes his poker very seriously. In fact, you might say Alex Kravchenko arrived at this year's World Series as a man on a mission. This is my second World Series of poker. In these six weeks, I played 31 tournament total. That's a lot. <laughs> you know, when you play that much, you have no strength for, for anything. I didn't see any shows. I want to go, but uh, no time. I was just playing and sleeping. <laughs> and here, if you want to play a lot of tournaments, you, you need to be physically prepared and also mentally prepared. Oh my god! I win the bracelet in Omaha 8 Beta, and it was my biggest prize in the, in, in the tournament so far. Now I can claim myself like a world champion. <laughs> I have a lot of congratulations from Russia. I hope after after I make uh, such a good uh, result here, it uh, will make uh, poker even better in Russia. He calls himself a semi-professional poker player. Well, six caches at this World Series, and this is his third top ten finish. That's pretty professional. All right, back to action. Four players left for the World Championship. Raymond Rami's not going to win any championships with five deuce. Two Kravchenko now. I'm telling you, this is going to be his last <laughs> World Series if he doesn't start showing us his whole cards. Raise. He does raise it up to 1.4 million. Yang now in the small blind with ace 10 off suit. Well, Jerry has position on Kravchenko. He's got the bigger stack, but he hasn't been able to get the better Raise. of Kravchenko of late. He wants to re raise it. 3.5 million more. He's going to raise it up to 4.9 million total. Another massive raise from our massive chip leader. It's hyper-aggressive to the point of being unorthodox, but it's worked for Jerry, not against Kravchenko, though. Lamb folds. Back to Alex now. I don't know Alex's whole cards, but this is probably pump it or dump it. He's standing, and it's time to pump it all in. Yang knows these double-ups are getting more serious and threatening to his chip lead. Well, Alex, I think this is the end. This has been Alex's M.O. in the late stages of the main event as the short stack leading up to this championship table. He was forced to move all in five times. It worked, and here he is. Well, if Yang calls here and Kravchenko doubles up here, he'll actually be able to see Yang not that far off in the distance. And Yang is going to tangle again with Alex. And pocket kings for Kravchenko. Kravchenko is holding the goods, and he's a favorite to stay alive again. Boy, Jerry's wife, Sue, has been put through the ringer here tonight. Kravchenko at risk, but ahead. And now the flop, 8-6-6, no help to Jerry Yang. What's the old expression? W up once, shame on you. W up three times, shame on me. <laughs> All right, turn card now is a tray, that's a blank. Jerry needs some help to get rid of another player. Yang can only send Kravchenko home here with a river ace. It's a deuce! Kravchenko does it again! Boy, what a series of duels these two are having. $10 cover, two drink minimum, <laughs> three shows nightly here at the Rio. It is official. Jerry Yang has a nemesis here at this championship table, and his name is Alex Krepchenko.
The World Series of Poker, presented by Milwaukee's Best Light. In 2006, chip leader Jamie Gold steamrolled his way to a world title. This year, Jerry Yang looked to be on a similar course, but it has since proven to be a much wilder ride. Is destiny now slipping out of his grasp? On the Milwaukee's Best Light Tournament update, Jerry Yang started the championship table as the second short stack. He was up to $73 million at one point, now coming back to earth with $58 million. And Yang's style on here, it lends itself to volatile swings. Who knows what's going to happen with him? Tuan Lam is the short stack right now. Looks like he won't be folding his way to any championship on your watch, Norman. He's still got a chance, and, and of course, four of the last nine main event winners, four and born, Scotty Wynn, Noel Furlong, Carlos Mortensen, and Joseph Hashin. Queen 10 for Krachenko, who has been on a roll. He's in the small blind. And he limps in for 250,000 more from the small blind. Yang now in the big blind. 5-4, offsuit. Now, Jerry can play for free, but if I'm him, just toss your cards away, okay? Do them right now. You cannot beat Alex. Stop hitting your head up against that Russian wall. <laughs> All right, now the flop. It's two kings and a queen, and Alex continues to crush Jerry on the flop. Yeah, why would he listen to me? He's now a 99-1 to underdog. Alex checks his kings up. Fold, Jerry. Just fold it. Jerry checks it. There's nothing free in life. Third card is a seven, and that gives Alex Kravchenko the check mark, and he checks again. Well, his only concern here is if he thinks Yang's slow play to king. One million. <laughs> Yang's going to bet at it. Drawn dead. You know, Jerry's track record in applying pressure late in the hands hasn't been good. He's better off putting down the hammer pre-flop. Kravchenko's not going anywhere. He's got him right in his sights. All right, river card. Krepchenko already has the check mark. A full house now for Alex. And he checks it again. Still might be worried that Jerry has a king. Two million. And Jerry will drive the action for two million more. That's a sad sight. Krepchenko now. Just with the call. He wins. Yeah, he wins. He wins another pot from the chip leader. And these missteps are adding up, and the Soviet Union is benefiting. They broke up the Soviet Union, Norman. He's from I Russia. I know what I know. <laughs> so Krevchenko really making a statement now up to over 32 million chips. Yang still with the chip lead. Rami with 28 million, and Tuan Lam with almost 12 million. Jerry Yang's lost his comfort zone. He's got to be here in these footsteps. Yeah, Alex Krepchenko has taken a lot of the luster off Jerry's table captain status. Seven tray for Alex. He won't play that. Now Jerry Yang with King 8 off suit. 2.5 million. And he's going to raise it up. You said he's been more successful pre-flop, and he's going to make it 2.5 million. Well, when he keeps raising four or five times the big blind, it's not that different from moving in. He's telling the others you might have to risk your tournament. Over to Tuan Lam, ace five of hearts, still wearing that lucky green shirt he's been wearing since day one of the main event. Claims he's washing it. Go on. <laughs> and he's going to move all in. Almost 12 million. So now that re-raise around to Raymond Rami. Rami has two queens. Well, for Rami, this would be an all-in unless he figures he's up against aces or kings. Uh, I'm sure he has thrown out Jerry's hand. He's wondering, does Lamb have aces or kings? I'm all in. And yeah, Rami does move all in. And that worries Tuan Lamb. As it should. Re raise back to Jerry now. Well, I like Jerry a lot, but I don't understand his deliberation in a spot like this. He's got king eight off suit. Jerry's card should have been tossed into an incinerator by now. Jerry Yang does Come fold. On, Jerry, you can take us both out to one shot. Two birds with one stone. Not that time. So with Yang folding, this is the degree all-in moment. Tuan Lam at risk and trailing the queens of Raymond Rami. When Tuan Lam first came to Canada, he couldn't get a dishwashing job for $3 an hour. He cut grass for $5 an hour. He was ecstatic to cash his first paycheck for $280. Now he's guaranteed almost $2 million a year. Raymond Rami's supporters hoping he can hang on to the lead with his queens against the ace five of Tuan Lam. And now the flop with Lamb all in. And there's an ace for Tuan Lamb! Oh. 
With that type of luck, he might have more money in his sights. That is one lucky green shirt. Raymond Rami and his rooters are suffering. And Tuan Lam now in position to double up. Turn card is a deuce. Rami taking it well. Any queen. Rami needs a queen to rally back and knock out Tuan Lam. And now the river card is another race. A full bow gives Lamb the degree check mark, and he survives. It is raucous in here, Lamb. <laughs> so a huge double up for Lamb and a big hit to Raymond Rami. Me and you, we are good all-in players. <laughs> Twan Lamb back in the game. The degree all-in moment is brought to you by Degree Men. More power than you need. One day you'll need it. Canadian pride is still flowing here at the Rio for adopted son Tuan Lam as this 41-year-old Vietnamese immigrant vies for a place in poker history. But believe it or not, Tuan's run to this final table almost took an entirely different course. I was supposed to go to Vietnam, and um, the last minute I changed my mind. Me and my friends were supposed to go there. The last minute I told him, like, uh, I, 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 I can't get on this plane. He said to me, you're crazy, you canceled the flight. I said, I'm sorry, I have, to, I have to play the worst years. All in. I said to myself, if I give up this chance, I have to wait for another year to come play worst years. So I changed my mind. Very good decision, come out now. <laughs> Very good decision, yes. Woo! If I can make something in this many events, I think I can change some people's life in Vietnam. First, I'm gonna go back there and build a temple. Uh, and I'm gonna put food and everything in the temple. And poor people, if they, they need food, they come and get it. If I can do it, that's my goal. I think it's destiny. Lam left Vietnam at age 17, ended up in an Indonesian refugee camp for two years where he learned English before making his way to Canada. The room's still packed around this championship table. Most people here ready to anoint Jerry Yang as champion, but things have changed just a little bit. And thanks in no small part to this man, Alex Krebchenko, Jack Eight of Hearts. Got to worry about this red menace now. <laughs> He's going to raise it up to 1.75. It's just Russian. Now. I know what I know. A couple of queens for Jerry Yang. Happy days are here again for Jerry Yang. Re-raise. There you go. Re-raise. <laughs> Twan Lamp's next to act. He's worried. Jerry's going to make it six and a quarter to go. He's been consistent. Another huge pre-flop raise. Jerry obviously decided today that once he got the chip lead to bring the hammer again and again. Nine tray for Lamb. That won't play. Ray Rami has a queen and an ace. Puts his card protector on the cards. This is going to play. Hold it. And all Raymond in. Rami moves all in. Well, you know, I might have just called there, you know, held back my other 10 million chips and seen a flop. Krepchenko will fold. And it will cost Jerry Yang almost 11 million to call this. Yeah, let me know when he makes his decision. <laughs> Kissing that picture of his children, that's brought him good luck. If I've got a chance of getting into heaven, I hope I'm not behind Jerry at the pearly gates. I'd lose my patience. <laughs> and he does make the call. Here we go again. Jerry shows his queens, and Rami knows he's in trouble. No more queens. One ace. Well, Yang in good shape, and trust me, he's tired of doubling everybody up. Raymond Rami at risk. His rooters are out of fingernails, I think. <laughs> Uh, now the flop. One ace, baby. And he got the ace! Just as Tuan Lamb did a moment ago. Oh, the road to eight and a quarter million dollars is not paved smoothly. Jerry Yang now in trouble. He's got to be devastated. Oh, a tray on the turn. And Yang down to one card. 
We're not dead. Yet. If Rami can avoid the last queen in the deck, he'll double up to 36 million chips. And there's a five! Rami does it! Yes! It's a good thing Jerry Yang's had such a big chip lead because it's almost all gone. And we've got a brand new ball game here at the Rio. Jerry Yang reeling from the barrage of blows. Kravchenko, Lamb, Rami all have doubled up through Yang. I'm sorry. You <laughs> can't me out yet. So how things have changed on the E-Trade financial chip count. You see Jerry Yang still the chip leader, but every other player is just one hand away from taking the chip lead. So now Norman will see how well Jerry Yang can handle adversity. Boy, at the early part of this final table, he could do no wrong. And the latter part of this final table, he can do no right. Raymond Rami sitting on newfound riches. Looks at 9-6. And he'll sit on him a little while longer. Krachenko now. Okay, Krachenko is officially out of my home game. <laughs> at my home game line, we make everybody show their whole cards to everybody else. It's just polite. He does raise with mystery cards to 2.1 million. Yang in the big blind with pocket eights. Jerry, I don't care if you've got quad eights in the hole. Take a walk. Avoid Alex Kravchenko at all costs. You cannot beat him. I'm all in. All in for Jerry Yang. I can't blame him with pocket eights, but can he shake or outduel Alex Kravchenko? Echo. We'll oh. soon find out. Kravchenko oh. is all go? in. And Alex turns over ace king going up against the pocket eights of Jerry Yang. If Yang loses this race, he'll be out of the chip lead for the first time since dawn. In fact, he'll be the short stack, and Kravchenko, remarkably, the short stack most of the day, would become chip leader. Alex has had a great run against Jerry. This final table has been Jerry Yang against the world, and lately the world's been winning. Alex is ace king versus the pocket eights, and here's the flop, and there's an eight for Jerry! Boy, that eight had to feel awfully good to Jerry Yang. What a time for Jerry to turn the tables on Alex Kravchenko. Kravchenko all but out of here. He'll need running straight cards to survive. Turn card now is a four of clubs, and Kravchenko's run is over. Yang finally shakes off Alex Kravchenko. Jerry Yang back on track. Gets rid of his arch nemesis, Alex Kravchenko, who wins 1.8 million. Lamb and Rami are guaranteed at least a million more. And now we are down to our last three players. Hallelujah. The names you know oh so well. The main event champion, Jamie Gold has done it! Win it all, and you secure a spot in poker history. And left here tonight, we have two men who survived refugee camps and a 62-year-old who's the first person ever from the continent of Africa to make a main event final table. On the Milwaukee's Best Light Pocket Camp, Jerry Yang with Ace-5. He's got his groove back. Raise. And he's feeling it. He's going to raise it up. Jerry. 68 million chips, puts 2.6 million of them into the pot. A little more than four times the big blind, not a big raise by his standard. Lamb folds, Raymond Rami with pocket kings. Pocket kings might be thinking all in. Raise. He does raise it. Let's put two in there. All right, there's the call of the two million. He was in the big blind. Six million. And he raises it six million more. We saw him push with the ace-queen all in. This time he just makes a smaller raise. Jerry Yang with the weak ace. Would need six million. And he's got his hands on it. And they do go into the pot as he makes the call. So the two biggest stacks treading lightly around each other. Yang and Rami now to the flop. And there's an ace for Jerry Yang to take the lead. Rami checks his kings. Yeah, he might be worried about that ace. 10 million. And Jerry Yang with 10 million. 
Yeah, a big exhale from Raymond Rami. A big decision. Hold it. And he moves the rest of his chips into the pot. Raymond Rami is going to risk his tournament on his belief that Jerry Yang does not have an ace. And this one, Jerry should think about. He'd be pretty much dead if Rami has a better ace. He'd be dead if Rami hit a set. That's a lot of money in there, Ray. I don't know if I can give up his hand. If Jerry calls, the pot will be 72 million. If he's wrong, he knows he'd go from the chip lead to the short stack. Your decision. What is it? I say it's your decision. Your decision. Your decision. You look at me like to question me. It's your decision. You must decide what you want to do. My decision, huh? <laughs> So what do you think I should call? No, you must play your hand. You must play your game. I think you want to draw, I think. Yang, a psychologist, has talked about trusting his reads. His reads actually are erratic. All right, I call. And Jerry Yang will put Rami at risk. His read was true here. Good call. You have me beat? Wow. Yes! One king now. Yes! Hot, hot, or king? Yes! Yang now has the likable Rami in desperate straits. Ten of us. Ten queen. Rami looking for help to come from behind. Tuan Lam sees a heads up matchup is possible for him. Jerry Yang ahead now with those aces. Ten of us. Here comes the turn card. And now the turn card. King, baby. It's a useless tray. Rami has to have a king. King, baby. King. River card. It's a deuce. Yes. 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 Raymond Rami yes. is gone. Yes. Yes. Rami, congratulated by the other heads up survivor. Jerry Yang gets swallowed up by his family. He's fully in command again. Rami's first World Series cash is worth over $3 million. No, 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 you have a friend for life, okay? Thank you. All right? Thank you played very well. Thank you. I have a lot of respect for you. Thank you. Yes. It will still be a celebration in South Africa. So with Rami's exit, it all comes down to the final two. Good luck, Ray. Now we fight for the champ. Okay. Yang and Lam heads up for a world championship. The 2007 World Series of Poker is presented by Milwaukee's Best Light, your best bet for great taste. Miller Brewing Company, and in part by Degree Men. More power than you need. One day you'll need it. And the Rio All Suite Hotel and Casino, home of the 2007 World Series of Poker. Welcome back to the Rio Poker Room. And the moment we have all been waiting for is upon us. Canadian Twan Lam and American Jerry Yang are heads up for eight and a quarter million dollars and the coveted World Championship bracelet. Two unlikely people who have defied all odds are now the only ones left standing. Ready to tango? Tuan Lam held on tight and waited for his moment while Jerry Yang attacked time and time again to seize his day. Yes! Now fame and fortune await one man who will be crowned world champion. So here we go, heads up. $4.8 million for runner-up, eight and a quarter million for our champion. Jerry Yang, 39, born in Laos, spent four years in a Thai refugee camp. Tuan Lam, 41, born in Vietnam, spent two years in an Indonesian refugee camp. Jerry Yang with a four to one chip advantage on Tuan Lam. Both players have vowed to donate a portion of their winnings to charitable causes. Jerry Yang looks at pocket eights. Two different routes for these guys getting here. Yang sees the chip lead early. Tuan Lam has pretty much folded his way into prime time. <laughs> a raise. raise. 
Uh, Jerry is going to raise it. Any pocket pair heads up, but pretty much any two cards for Jerry means a raise. He makes it 2.3 million. Tuan Lam actually played very well to get here. He just got conservative here at the final table. Ace, queen of diamonds. I'm all in. And he moves all in. So Lamb putting the pressure on early. Yang will take his time. Even if he were to call here and lose, he'd still have a, a three to two chip lead on Lamb. High call. Jerry makes the call, and here we go. Yes. Both players, Norman, seem on. pleased with their hole cards. Come on. Jerry should be happier. I'm gonna do it for Canada, man. Yes! Juan Lamb with Ace Queen needs some help. Jerry Yang will need to just hang on with those pocket eights. Yang trying to complete his remarkable final table run. He started as the second shortest stack, but like Jamie Gold last year, he has knocked out all but one player here at the final table. Lamb just looking to get lucky. All right, and now the flop. And he does get lucky! Lamb pairs his queen! Juan Lamb has come from behind again and again. And for the all-day chip leader, Jerry Yang has taken a ton of blows to the head. Lamb in great position to put a hurt on Jerry. Head up, baby! Yang looking for help on the turn. Turn card is a seven. Lamb still way ahead, but Jerry picks up a straight draw. That, that gives Jerry four more outs here. Two improbable finalists bumping heads in poker's biggest arena. Jerry's wife, Sue, most anxious right now. And Jerry holding that picture of their kids in his hands. To knock Lamb out and end this thing, Yang will need an eight or a six for a straight. The river card. It's a six! Yeah! He hit it! Yeah! Jerry Yang is the 2007 world champion. And there's one unhappy multimillionaire. An American dream come true for Jerry Yang. He's the sixth straight amateur to win the big one. A dominating performance ends in glory while Tuan Lam falls just short. Jerry Yang's mission is complete. Jerry Yang began as just one in a sea of thousands and handled himself in a style that was uniquely his own. I want you to know you have a friend for life, okay? The former refugee who dealt with hardships his entire life. Boy, I don't think I can lay this hand down. I call. Never lost faith. Come on, Lord. Have a purpose for me today. Let me win. And persevered at this final table. Yeah! 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 And now Jerry Yang has won an amazing eight and a quarter million dollars and the ultimate title in poker. So the day you came to America from a refugee camp in Thailand, you've said was the greatest day of your life. How does this feel? That was the happiest day of my life. My winning today also means a lot to me because I know that I can use this money to do a lot of goods for other people out there. For Norman Chad, I'm Lon McCarran. Congratulations, Jerry Yang. You are the 2007 World Series of Poker Main Event Champion.